After studying this module, you shall be able to know the purpose of psychohistorical and psychobiographical method and become aware of what kinds of inquiry and analysis is entailed in the psychohistory and what are not. Understand the causal and coherent whole forms of explanations used to describe psychohistorical methods. Get acquainted with the three areas of psychohistory and the four paradigms suggested by Robert Lifton. Narrate the historical antecedents of psychobiography and the history of its evolution as an established form of inquiry. Get familiar with all the process underlying the method of psychobiography and to acknowledge the problems posed by psychohistory as well as its remediation and also recognize the limitation and usefulness of psychobiography method. This module begins with mentioning the definition of psychohistory and specifying what feature entails psychohistorical methods and what doesn't. Following that, causal and coherent varieties of explanation are delineated and the areas of psychohistory are outlined. After that, Lifton's four model or paradigms in psychohistory is explained briefly and the problems presented in psychohistory method is declared along with some remediation. Next, the method of psychobiography is defined along with causal and coherent whole explanations. This is followed by its historical antecedents and the chronicle of evolution of this method. The processes underlying the method is also mentioned stepwise and lastly, the limitations and usefulness of psychobiography is narrated. Psychobiographies and Psychohistorical Methods Psychohistory Definition There has been considerable confusion and disagreements regarding the matters of definition, aim and method of psychohistory. Several scholars and researchers suggest different ideas and connotation to describe this method. For example, D. Moss in 1975 considers psychohistory as the history of psyche. Kowal in 1971 regards it as a concept of culture that involves a system of shared meaning, while Dun in 1974 conceptualizes it as an approach to understand the past through merging of historical and psychological traditions. Also, the aim of psychohistory gathers differing views as Demos in 1975 states it as a discovery of laws while Lifton observes the aim as a new search for human essence. Even the methods advocated by psychohistorians are present in varieties where Maglish in 1972 propagates the application of psychoanalytic theory to history. Erickson in 1964, though agreeing to this proportion, further adds on to it the concept of identity as a historical tool. While Binion in 1976 asked to focus on the feeling out of motive behind the significant actions. According to Crossby and Crossby 1981, psychohistory is a form of history which explicitly uses the concepts, principles and theories of psychology to enhance our understanding of particular people and events in the past. This definition can be simultaneously considered more inclusive as well as more restrictive than others. It is relatively inclusive in the sense that this definition doesn't restrict psychohistory to only one or selected few kinds of psychological principles. Rather, it allows the use of a variety of principles, concepts or theories. When the subject of inquiry is a single actor, then applying some form of personality theory would be more helpful and if mass movements are the subject, the principles of social psychology seems more relevant.
summary psychohistory is a form of history which explicitly uses the concept principles and theories of psychology to enhance our understanding of particular people and events in the past however the complex nature of this intricate method cannot be summed up by this simple definition there is considerable confusion and disagreement regarding the matters of definition aim and method of psychohistory and many critics question several works of psychohistory in terms of its validity psychohistorians uses two main types of explanations to discern this method causal and coherent whole explanations causal explanations can be described as those explanations that seek to account for adult behavior in terms of childhood experiences coherent whole explanations on the other hand tries to foster a unified whole out of apparently scattered bits of data in the ways as it related to the actions of persons or groups Lloyd de Moss identified three interrelated areas of psychohistorical study which were the history of childhood psychobiography and social psychohistory Robert J Lifton proposed four model or paradigms of psychohistory namely prehistorical psychopathological great man in history and social psychohistory the first two are based on freudian work and the rest move towards the modern approach psychobiography is the most significant and popular form of psychohistory in this particular method the researcher seeks to understand single historical individual and their motivations in history this area mainly involves understanding a person's emotional growth their personal family and societal relations the time in which the person lives and how all of these interact to allow the person to have an effect on history some of the historical antecedents of psychobiography are biographical literature pathography freud's conception of creativity and dilthey's hermeneutics freud's analysis on leonardo's creativity marks the embarking of psychobiography and popularized classic psychobiography However, due to its theoretical and methodological inadequacy, this paradigm was no longer predominantly used. The decline of classic psychobiography gave way to ideographic personality researchers that resulted from the works of Alport, Murray and Erickson. Lastly, following the criticism of ideographic approach and narrative turn in psychology, we observed a renaissance in the field of psychobiography.